I'm Lancelot from Brick. Uh, you might have run into me. I uh, also have Syl running around. I think he's also in a Brick t-shirt. Uh, and um, my presentation is going to be much less technical than the last two. Uh, there is no math. There's not even a slide about blockchain, so that should be pretty convenient. Going to be a good breather before the next topic. Um, so, what am I going to talk about? Quick plan. Uh, so, it starts still in the effing brick. Uh, first, I'm going to do a quick uh, reminder slash introduction if you don't know us. What is brick? Catch you all up on what we've been doing. Then, I'm going to go into the meat of this presentation, which is the brick tricks. Uh, the way we're going to do it is we're going to focus on two different user flows on the website. And I'm going to tell you the tricks, the UX tricks that we've been using to, to make it a good experience um, despite Brick being, uh, you know, DAP. So, well, uh, as you might know, DAPs are usually not the best uh, user experience. And then there were other things I couldn't fit in the narrative. Um, I might use them, skip some of those to gain some time. So, yeah, secret zero step, explaining the title of this presentation. Uh, why steal the brick? Uh, well, last year when we were already at Starknet CC, uh, we were, you know, um, having fun, good vibes all around. It was amazing, and um, you know, we're at the party, and then we we want to leave at like 1 a.m., and so we go back to our booth and we we want to get back our actual brick, and uh, catastrophe, uh, we discover it's no longer there. Somebody had actually stolen the brick, so we tweeted about it. And that's my next slide. Uh, it became kind of a meme, uh, steal the brick, stop stealing the brick. And uh, I figured I'd reverse the rules today. Uh, we can move forward like three slides, I think. Yeah, that was the tweet. Next one, next one, next one. Right, so why, what is brick? Brick is built on three principles. NFCs are objects. Uh, they should be composable. They should be interoperable. Uh, we're not actually saying anything too brand new here, but that's uh, how we came up with the with the idea, uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, I'm fl flashing fast. So um, we took some inspiration from a Danish company that does construction blocks and that I will not name, uh, but they have a full, full letter name. Uh, so bricks are uh, an uh, 1155 compatible uh, building block uh, stored on chain. Uh, you can use them to make NFTs. Slide. Yeah, uh, those are regular ERC 721s. Uh, next slide. Uh, and then you can assemble your bricks into NFTs, disassemble the NFTs, you get the bricks back. Uh, it works exactly like said Danish company product. Uh, so what this does is that brick is underspecified, and this has some cool consequences, mainly free. Uh, it lets users build NFTs that are custom made for the environment that they're going to be used in. Uh, if you think of game assets, you want to play with a spaceship in a spaceship game. You want to play with uh, a chair in The Sims, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it lets users recycle value because you can edit your NFT, you can make a new one. And simplicity of the protocol enables creativity because if you have a blank page, you don't really know what to do, but if you have a framework, uh, well, that lets people work within that. And so you can build directly on the Brick website. Uh, we have, like, that's the dApp where you can uh, make your own NFTs right away. Um, yeah, so, so far we've released two NFT collections. Uh, the first one, the OG one, is the Starknet Planet, so we sold boxes. You can open your box and see what's inside. I'm going to get on that user flow later, so I'm not going to uh, dwell too long onto this. Uh, the second project is Ducks Everywhere. Um, that's built by Out Something, a French artist. Uh, he's made like 250 ducks. They're amazing. We say quack quack. We have a ton of fun, and this was the, base, the best side event at FCC, so sorry if you missed it. And uh, very recently, we did the Brick Factory. Uh, so we allowed users to buy bricks directly from the website. Um, you, we have a fancy supply demand curve system. And also, we, you know, we really messed up. It should have been named the Fabric. Uh, that's on us. Uh, sorry about that. Anyways, um, some numbers quickly. We have 3.3 million bricks that we sold, about 260k unique owners, and I couldn't be bothered to find the real number of NFTs, so I put 200 to 300k. That's a big range, but it's somewhere in there. Uh, you know, you can disassemble them, so it doesn't matter too much. Uh, but these are like large numbers, and how we achieved this is by having a good UX so that people can easily use a brick website, and so that's where I'm going to actually... Oh. Cool, amazing, thanks. And thanks a lot for switching the slides. Uh, so yeah, brick tricks. 
so what I'm going to do first is show you this flow that's going very quickly as a GIF right now, or a GIF. I, I don't know what church you're following. Um, yeah, so how you can just mint something. Uh, so when you go to brick.construction or websites, you land on the landing page. Obviously, you know, we feature big create buttons. It's kind of an obvious thing, but you need to do it. Uh, people land r directly on the builder, the 3D editor. Uh, it's built with uh, 3GS, it's WebGL. One thing to note here, there's no need to connect your wallet. Uh, we don't gate you behind a collect wallet thing. That's, again, kind of a simple thing, but most dApps actually don't clear this bar. Uh, you see nothing until you've connected your wallet, which is not great for user experience. With Brick, you can start building instantly, and it's pretty easy. You just plop down blocks, you click with your mouse. It's not as good on mobile, but thankfully, uh, as far as I know, well, mobile wallets are still not very used on StartNet. Um, so when you've made your construction and you're happy about it, you can click on Mint, and that's when we ask you to connect your wallet. Uh, if you don't have a wallet, usually you'd have to download an extension and uh, you know uh, spend a ton of time trying to figure out what that means. Uh, something that hasn't been announced yet because our presentation is at 6 p.m., but Argent has, will be releasing very soon the web wallet. So basically, you just log on with uh, an email address. They create a wallet for you. It keeps you in the it keeps the user in the page in the flow, and they don't have to install anything else. And that's great for user experience because they can just keep you know, uh, interacting with the dApp. Uh, we could actually push this back to the actual main transactions, but uh, we haven't done that yet. So then when you've connected your wallets, you can choose your screenshots or preview. You can do your own thing, choose your title, the description of your NFT. But then you have a problem uh, that you don't have bricks. So that's not actually a problem because uh, we let you buy bricks directly. And so to do that, we use well a fancy not, to, not copied from Uniswap uh, by Bricks uh, widget, and we do a multi-call. So you do in the same transaction, buying the Bricks, minting your NFT. Uh, it's cheaper and it's simpler since you only have to uh, sign something once. But that's not the end of it. Uh, when the transaction is sent is where some dApps lose the user. So the transaction, yeah, it's super fast with uh, 0.12. But uh, you know, it still takes some time for the indexer to pick it up. And during this time, you want to make sure that the user is aware that something is going on, that you haven't lost something. If they reload the page, what happens? Uh, again, most dApps don't, don't really work that well if you reload the page at this moment. But we do, because we show the item already in the profile as pending. So you can see like small blue, um, blue pending activity on top of my widget. The number of bricks also goes blue. We also show it in the user profile as a pending item. If you reload, it's still there. And one thing that I think more applications should steal from us is the idea of a notification panel. Again, I'm not like trying to blow your mind here. These are pretty basic things. But having a notification panel allows people to say, oh, yeah, OK, so the dev is aware that I'm minting something. I got links to the transaction on the Explorer. Uh, I've got links to the page on the website. I know that uh, they haven't lost anything that I've been doing. And so when the transaction goes through and the indexer has caught up, uh, we just basically pop a toast on the website that says, well, your set was successfully minted. We drop the pending tag, and the user is happy he's done it. So a quick recap, things to still have some sort of notification center. Use optimistic updates on the front end so that the user know that you know, uh, something is going on and that potentially you can just carry on with the flow. I'm going to get into more details on that in, in the next part of this. Delay the wallet connection as much as possible. Uh, if your dApp can be used without a wallet, don't gate them behind a connect wallet thing. And use convenient multicalls wherever possible to reduce the number of um, signing that the user has to do to reduce the transaction fees and so on. Yeah, but wait, that's not all that we've been doing. So uh, the second flow that I'm going to be talking about is the unboxing flow from the Start and Planet collection. So here is where we actually leverage Optimistic updates a ton, because there's a lot of steps. The first step is, well, buying your box. Uh, so that's like, we have an inline checkout flow. I'm not going into details there. But well, it shows up in your profile immediately. It says it's pending, you know, to old news. I've already told you about this. But then when the transaction has gone through, you can actually right away, when we recognize that the transaction is going through, you can right away go to the unbox uh, page which is another uh, 3D dynamic scene. It's totally not overkill to have an actual physics simulation when unboxing an NFT. We totally didn't spend weeks on this, and it was totally worth it. Um, and like this is the actual taking place during the unboxing transaction. 
And we optimistically put you then, redirect you to the builder. Uh, and then this time you have your instructions on the, on the right of the website. And you can pretty easily follow them. Uh, this is like fully interactive. Uh, you have a 3D um, thingy on the right. We have cool progress bars. If you put a brick in the right spot, we put green confetti. If you put a brick in the wrong spot, we put red confetti and nobody wants to see that. So it's so easy a child could do it. And I would actually recommend that you buy uh, brick boxes for your children, not shilling. Um, yeah, and then when you finish the construction, we have more confettis. And uh, if you click on mint, that takes you to the regular minting flow that I was just describing. So things to steal, I put the four points again because then you have everything on one page. Uh, have real-time feedback for your users and use confettis. Confetti's are good. Right, MISC tips, uh, totally uncontroversial shilling of technology. I added this after I realized that this was totally uncontroversial. Uh, first thing, hire a designer. This is actually uncontroversial. Um, the version on the left is the original website. You can actually still go and see it if you go to old.brick.construction. Shouldn't be saying this, but it was very orange. Um, it was functional, is what I will say about it. And then we hired a designer, and now we have a website that you know, actually looks good. So that's something. And you know, also, the usability has been much improved in the builder itself. So that's a pretty good tip. Uh, we hired a freelance. It didn't cost us that much money, all in all. And thanks, Victor, uh, who was uh, the designer who's not here, I think. Uh, second completely uncontroversial thing, yeah, use tools. Uh, don't rebuild everything. Don't, don't overthink infrastructure. Uh, I'm using Kubernetes for a simple website, and I'm very happy about it. When we did the Brick Factory and the campaign with Argent, we had like a, an, absurd, uh, um, an absurd increase in the number of users. I just spin out 30 containers from my front end and my back end, and it worked out um, because I was using Kubernetes and not a Lambda function like the Starnet ID team, which had some slight uh, overdraft fees, let's say. Uh, another thing that I do is I'm using Vue for the front-end framework. I'm a Vue maximalist. Um, I think you should think of, uh, of your front-end well, front network, no, sorry, your front-end framework is important. What I think Vue does really well is give you this implicit messaging system for uh, data updates. So I've done like some quick code comparison with vanilla JavaScript, but basically in Vue you can just create a variable and when you change the value of that variable, any of the implicit dependencies get an update uh, with this new value. It's exactly the same as if you were crafting a custom messaging system where you have to listen to stuff, except that it's much better code, it's much easier to decouple. And I think one of the good things about Vue is that it lets you write really terrible code, but only in one specific file. Uh, in my experience, it's been much harder to do if you go for like a Redux uh, system of uh, data flow, because then you kind of have to change 50 things, even if you're just trying to add a single feature. Vue lets you write terrible code in, but without contaminating the rest of your code base. And I think as front-end frameworks go, that's like a really powerful feature, because you always want to have something weird at some point. And final trick, and this is the first slide about blockchain in this presentation, use call data. Call data is free, call data is cool. We use it to store the 3D shape of the NFTs that people mint. Uh, everything gets sent as call data to the layer two. Layer two call data is not actually sent to L1, so it's literally free on Starknet at the moment. Uh, and it lets you say things such as, our NFTs are fully on-chain, which is cool. Right. So that was the final missed trick. Uh, quickly, what's next for Brick? We're going to be using uh, Validium storage like everybody else for cheaper transactions in the future. Uh, please, Starkware. Uh, we're going to do the Cairo one rewrite. Actually, I'm going to rewrite the Cairo one rewrite because of you know, the new syntax for contracts. Uh, that's going to allow us to separate the ducks, for example, in the run collection. So if you want to know what the floor price of a duck is, you'll soon be able to do that. And we're also going to integrate more tightly with Starknet's gaming ecosystem. Uh, some of you might have caught uh, Terence's presentation on the main stage. Uh, if you didn't watch it about Dojo, it's really cool. So we'll do more things with them. That was Brick, Brick.Construction. Follow us on Twitter, uh, Brick or Silv or myself. We post memes and sometimes actual good topics, mostly memes, to be honest. Uh, but like those are high-value memes. That's it for me. Thanks for coming.